Hello, everybody. Well, welcome back to another planty video. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we are going to be answering some questions, repotting some plants, and just having a great time. So I posted some questions, or no, I posted a question box asking you guys to submit questions for this Q&A quite a while ago now, like definitely several weeks, probably over a month, maybe even close to two months ago. It's been a while, okay? Maybe it hasn't been that long. I don't know. Time is very warped for me right now, so yeah. Anyways, I'm very excited to be sitting down and filming this video today, and this is probably the most organized I've ever been, or like the most prepared I've ever been for a Q&A. I actually put effort into going through all the questions and organizing them into categories. I've got my plants ready that we're gonna be working with. I have my mic set up, so hopefully the audio is going to be good. And yeah, I'm feeling good. So I've split these questions into three different categories. The first one is plant. So any like planty questions, plant care, anything about my particular plants, that's gonna be the first category. And then the second category is personal. So anything to do with my life or, you know, just what's going on with me. Uh, and then the last category is just miscellaneous. So just kind of random questions that aren't exactly like super personal, but just, I don't know, just random questions that you guys submitted. Um, and of course I could not include all of the questions, even going through and choosing the ones that were like answered, asked the most and the ones that I wanted to include, I still had over like 120 questions on the list. And that was not even like, that was probably only half of them that were asked. So I'm gonna try to do Q and A's more often. So I'm gonna try to do Q and A's more often. And also why does it feel like my overalls are falling down? This mic situation, I swear. I'm gonna try to do these more often just so, I don't know, just so we can keep in touch a little better, if you like. Okay, I've also got my tea here, green tea. I actually think one of the questions that was asked that I didn't put on this list was what kind of tea do I like? Why didn't I include that? I don't remember. Anyways, I'm gonna answer it right now. I really like green tea, basically all different types of green tea. This is jasmine tea and it's delicious. I love it so much. Green tea just feels so nourishing and healing to me. And yeah, it's just, it's just such a comforting tea. I also love just regular red rose black tea with some milk and some sugar. That is just also very comforting. And then for bedtime, I love any sleepy time teas that have like chamomile and lavender. And I really like the Nighty Nights and Nighty Night Extra. Those will like knock me out. Oh, there's also a really good of the Nighty Night ones that is I think lavender and mint. First, I'm gonna introduce you to the plants that I'm gonna be working on throughout this video. This isn't gonna be very focused on like what I'm doing with the plants, but I'll just explain it now. So the first one is my philodendron brantianum right here, um, which is doing pretty well recently. You can see we have a really nice new leaf coming in up there. And this is the biggest leaf I've ever gotten on this plant. So I'm very impressed about that. And then there's also another one on the other vine that's unfurling right there. So very nice. But as you can see, she's right at the top of her pole. So I'm actually going to be adding an extension and yeah, I'm probably gonna have to move her to the other cabinet because I think she's gonna be too tall to go back into the Millsbow wide. I think she'll fit in the other one though. We'll see. Hopefully she fits somewhere, honestly, because if I have to take this out of the cabinet, it's gonna be bad news bears. And then the next one that I'm gonna be working with is my Epipremnum Pinnatum Marble. This is one of my new plants from Plant Haven Toronto and I'm obsessed. It's already been growing so much. Like I've gotten several new leaves on it. You can see there's even one coming in right here as well. And it's just growing so much faster than I was expecting. You would think that a plant with this much white, like that's this highly variegated, you'd think it would grow super slowly, but I've already had multiple leaves come in on this. So that's very cool. And my goal for this today is to get it started on a pole as well. So I have these thickly small size poles that is gonna be perfect for just a little tiny plant like this. I actually really wanted to get it on a Rousseau pole, but 
Uh, I just think this is gonna be more suited to it while it's small. And then I'll probably, once it becomes like a larger plant, then I'll probably do it on the Rousseau uh, front closing poles. But this is gonna be perfect for now, this size. So that will be good. And I'm also gonna be repotting it into this terracotta because I think that will just be so cute. So I'm just gonna start crafting my poles and I'm just gonna answer the questions. I have so many, even though I narrowed it down, I have so many to answer. So uh, most of them are just gonna be like quick answers unless it's something that I, you know, have to expand on. But yeah, just gonna start folding my moss poles. Okay, so like I said, we're starting with the plant category. And the first question is tips for transitioning your plants out of the Ikea greenhouse cabinet, or I guess out of like any, yeah, out of a cabinet to regular room conditions. And from my experience, the biggest tip that I can offer for that is to keep up with your watering because the one bad experience that I had, and I'm very like casual, I guess, when it comes to my plant care. Uh, I don't often go out of my way to like provide super strict care for my plants. Like I just kind of, I don't know, I'm like pretty laid back about it. So I don't usually do much when I transition my transition my plants out of the cabinet. I usually just take them out and for the most part they've been fine. But the one time that they were not fine was my El Choco Red and that plant ended up rotting when I took it out. And the reason I believe that it rotted is because it dried out too much, like it just got way too thirsty. And that in combination with the lower humidity just caused the roots to completely shrivel up and rot. So my biggest tip is to keep up with your watering. If it's on a moss pole, make sure the moss pole is staying moist. Don't let anything dry out. Like don't let the plant get so dry that it's wilting because that's what I did. And that did not pan out well for me. So if you're able to keep up with the watering and I would say even just like, yeah, just keep a really close eye on the watering. And I think that that's gonna be the biggest thing. Other than that, I honestly haven't had any issues. I know that some people do it gradually, like taking a plant out for a few hours and then putting it back in and doing that for a while and then like keeping it out overnight and putting it back in and like gradually exposing it to room conditions. But for me, I just don't have the patience for something like that. I mean, if it was a plant that, like a really sensitive plant that really needed that, then maybe I would, but for most plants, I just it just hasn't been an issue as long as I'm not underwatering. Okay, I'm already talking way, way, way too much. So, oh my goodness, I just really, why is it so hard for me to be concise? I do not know. The next question is, what genera are you interested in trying out, if any? I don't know if there's a specific like genus that I'm really like drawn towards trying out, but there's definitely random plants from different genuses or genera. So for example, uh, a new one that I'm going to be trying is the Syningia leucotrica. And that's like very, very new to me. It's a codex plant, so that will be interesting to navigate. <laughs> but yeah, that's one that I've really been wanting to try out. I'm looking at my little wish list tab on Instagram here. Another one that I've always been curious about is the Hoperzia. The one I have saved is the Hoperzia numularifolia. Numularifolia. The growth pattern is so cool in that one. Columnia, there's a lot of really beautiful columnia on there. I don't have any of those in my collection right now. I would love to try that out. Also the Passiflora trifasciata, those are so cool. I would love to grow that one as well. And then just, you know, plants that I already have like kind of dipped my toe into, but I would like to learn about and try more of like different types of carnivorous plants. Uh, I would love to get some sundews and some more pings and um, like orchids, some more orchids. I think that that would be very fun. Oh, and the next question is, do you have any carnivorous plants? Will you be getting more into carnivorous plants? And my answer is that yes, I do have a few of them. I think only three, actually. I have two Nepenthes and then one Pinguicula. Um, I have the Nepenthes glandulifera and also a Nepenthes fusca and then a Pinguicula more, Oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of it. I love it though. I love my pink so much and I really want it to bloom and I really want more of them. I'm gonna be placing an order this spring slash, oh my goodness, this spring slash summer for 
um, more pings and probably some other little carnivorous plants as well because I do really want to get more into them. So that is my answer to that question. Definitely very interested in carnivorous plants. I'm just taking out some of the moss here because it needs to be not full up to the top for me to be able to like extend it easily. So that's what I'm doing here. I don't really know why I've tipped it over though. <laughs> I could have just left it straight up and pulled the moss out from the top, but whatever. I am distracted right now. Okay, up you go. The next one is what's your favorite Hoya? And I would have to say probably Hoya Linearis or Hoya Compacta. I think it's torn between those two, but I feel like it's the Linearis. I'm just gonna go with that. I love the Linearis so much. Yeah, obsessed. Probably my number one favorite Hoya. Imagine if there was a variegated one. Why is that not a thing? Why isn't there more varieties? Like I love the Hoya Compacta and I have the different varieties of that one, except for the silver one. I would love to have the silver one. The, I think it's called Jody's Silver. But there's, as far as I know, there's not different varieties of the Linearis, which like, what the heck? I wanna be able to collect more of them. Probably for the best though, honestly. <laughs> The next question is what different conditions slash care do you give for your Monstera Albo versus Aurea versus Thai Constellation? And at first I was like, I, don't, I give them the same conditions. Like I treat them all the same, but then I thought about it a little bit more and I was like, you know what? No, I don't. Um, I would say that the Albo is my least fussy one. And I'm only saying that I don't have enough experience with my Aurea to like, say that it's, it is fussy or isn't fussy. In my experience so far, it hasn't been very fussy, but we'll see what the future brings. Sorry, I'm trying to like get this situated in here. So when I thought about it a little bit more, I think that the main differences are for the Thai Constellation, I try to not let it dry out as much as I would let my elbow dry out because as we know Thai Constellation can be a lot more finicky when it comes to root rot and things like that. So I just try to keep like a very steady watering routine with that one. And then for my Monstera Aurea, I give that one a lot of light because I was told you really need to blast it with light to get like that beautiful striking yellow variegation. So mine's right under a Soltec light. And so far I think it's working because the newest leaf looks so incredible. So that's what I've been prioritizing for the care of that one. And then my elbow is just very chill. Like I don't really do anything special with that one. I pretty much treat it like the rest of my tropicals. So yeah, those are the main care differences for those three. I will give my tie some credit though, because it has been very, very good lately. Like it's just been, it's been doing well. It's been growing and yeah, it's, I'm very impressed. I'm having technical difficulties. I don't know why this extension isn't fitting. I thought that these were the same, but maybe they're not. This one seems to be bigger. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Should I try to extend it with just one of the smaller ones? It'll probably look weird, but I might be able to get it to work. I think I'm gonna have to try that because yeah, this is just, it's just not fitting at all, which is, very weird. I extended my philodendron majestic not long ago and it was so like seamless to do it. Like it really, it fit right in. So I just don't understand why it's not working with this one. Anyways, I'm going to try to, I think maybe, I think they have like different type. Like I know that there's the regular grow pole and then the like pro version, but I don't really know the difference differences between them or I'm not really sure. I'd have to look on their website, but maybe I have like two like slightly different models or something. I don't know, but we're going to try this instead. Next question is how much humidity do your plants grow in? Asking because I have a melanochrysum. <laughs> okay. So my household humidity is 
uh, around 50% usually right now. Actually, I don't even have a hygrometer outside of my cabinets anymore. Well, I do in the bedroom actually, but it's around 50 to 55% and most of my plants do really well. Like that's, yeah, that's enough humidity to grow most, um, most of the plants that I have. And then of course I do have my Ikea greenhouse cabinets where the humidity is around 80% in those. And of course the plants especially like that, most of them. So yeah, this is a little ridiculous because it's obviously gonna be smaller, but I mean, the plus of this is that I think it will still fit in my Millsbo wide cabinet so it can stay in its regular spot, which is nice. Um, I think I'm just gonna do it. And then I can maybe zip tie to like, keep it from being loose in there. I think I'm just gonna do it. I don't really have another option right now because I don't know why that extension was not fitting on. Anyways, I'm gonna have to stand up to fill, to fill this up. Melanochrysum is like one of the more finicky philodendron that do need really high humidity. Same with this one, the Brantianum. That's why it lives in my cabinet and I can't really take it out. I don't know how some people grow this in regular room humidity. Like Kevin has one that's really nice and full and I don't know how he does it, but my experience even growing this one in a cabinet is difficult because the leaves just don't wanna unfurl sometimes and that's the problem that happens with philodendron melanochrysum. Even in cabinet conditions, I struggled with the melanochrysum, so I don't know. I don't really have like great advice for that one because I haven't been successful with it yet. But to answer your question, my household humidity is 50 to 55 and in the cabinets is around 80%. Oh, I like the next question. It's how does the plant hobby improve your mental health? I think that it improves my mental health by, well, for a lot of reasons, really. It brings a sense of joy to every single day. Like I genuinely just love walking around my home, looking at all of the new leaves, keeping tabs on certain plants. Like lately I've been really excited about my uh, streptocarpus and because it's about to bloom. So it's just exciting to go and check on it every morning and see how it's looking and you know, take photos. And um, I just appreciate that aspect of like watching watching something like develop and grow like that gives me something to look forward to every single day because I have so many plants. There's always something going on with, you know, some of them every day. So that's very fun. I remember when I first got into plants, that was like a big thing for me and a big reason that I wanted more plants because I, if, if none of my plants were putting out new leaves, I was just like, oh my goodness, like I need more plants so that, you know, at least some of them are putting out a new leaf every day or something like that. So since I have so many now, there's definitely always something going on. I think walking around and looking at my plants like that is very meditative as well. Like it's very, it's a very mindful activity. You're very in the moment um, and just like appreciating your surroundings and you know, it connects you with nature. Like I just feel like there's so many benefits to plants and having something to take care of. Even though, you know, I've got a lot of plants and sometimes it's a pain in the butt. I genuinely love just relaxing and doing plant chores. I'm sure that a lot of us can relate to that. Like it's so nice to just set aside an afternoon or a few hours and do a bunch of repotting and just spend time with our plants. We put a lot of time and effort into caring for them, but I think that they also heal us so much. So it's kind of a beautiful energy exchange. The next question is, how is your staghorn fern doing? And um, it's doing okay, but it's just, it's one that I really want to, I want it to do better. Uh, it's doing okay, but I want it to be thriving because it's a plant that I really want to learn more about and even like get a different variety of that plant. Maybe I should have said that in the other question as well. Like I only have that one um, staghorn fern or I think the genus is Platycerium. And um, it's a very cool plant. I love admiring other people's, but I just haven't really like cracked the code on mine. I mean, I think it's just consistency. Like I think I just need to keep up with my watering and everything like that. But um, I also need to do more research on them because there's just things that I don't know. Like I don't really know much about their fertilizer preferences. I don't really know if I'm supposed to like remount it or once they're mounted, are they good forever? Like, I don't know. I have a lot of questions. So 
yeah, but my staghorn fern is just kind of hanging on for now. It's definitely doing better now that it's in front of my Soltec light. It used to be just in my dark window, so it's happier now that it's getting more light. Next, how has your experience been with thickly poles versus others you have used? Uh, I really love thickly poles. I am very obsessed with them right now. I find them very easy to use. I mean, besides, I don't know why I was having this weird extension issue today, but besides that, I find them very easy to use. I've never had any problems. They maintain moisture very well. Um, there's a lot of brands making this style of pole now. And yeah, I think that they're great. Like, especially if you're just wanting to try out moss poles, it's just an easy option to use when it comes to like putting them together and maintaining them and everything. Like the wire DIY poles, which are still great and I'm still gonna be using for my larger plants. They just, um, they're great, but they just take a lot more, you know, you need to invest in all of the supplies and you need to take the time to make them and everything. So these ones are just a really simple option if you're just wanting to try out moss poles. And the maintenance is also less because it maintains the moisture for longer. But yeah, I have a lot of different styles of poles in my home and I like them all for different purposes. Like I love my Trifolia self-watering poles too. Those are just like so simple, so easy. They're stable enough for um, large plants. They're easy to maintain and yeah, they look really good. They're just like nice and polished looking. So yeah, those are really great as well. I got a lot of questions of like, where is this plant that you used to have? And one that I get all the time is asking about my gigantic silver sword that I used to have, which, oh my goodness, it's so sad that I had to get rid of that, but it just would not fit in my space. I could barely, like when my cabinet used to be in my living room, I could barely open my cabinet because that silver sword was so big and I couldn't really fit other plants in that area because it was just, it was just such a massive plant and it was just not cut out for my one bedroom apartment type of thing, you know? So it was just an issue of that. So I ended up giving it away. I think like sometime in the fall, I ended up giving it away. So I'm sure it went to, you know, <laughs> a good home, but yeah, I'm currently growing out another silver sword. I had propagations and now I just have like a little baby pot of silver sword. So that's in the cabinet and I'm excited for that to grow. And I think it'll be fun to try to mature it from being like just a little tiny baby plant. People are also asking about my alocasia stingray. And I've been getting this question a few times too, which is interesting because I have not had my alocasia stingray for years now. That was like two moves ago was the last time that I had it. So, but I did make a whole video about it. So um, I guess that's why people are asking, but yeah, I ended up getting rid of it in one of my moves, you know, a few years ago. And it was just, I don't know, I was just kind of over it. It was really big and it needs to be staked up because the leaves would get so floppy. So yeah, I don't know. I just ended up getting rid of it when I downsized. Somebody else was asking about philodendron fuzzy petiole. I think that they are meaning my philodendron squamiferum. And again, I just ended up getting rid of that one. I just didn't really feel like I needed that one because I have other philodendron that kind of serve the same purpose. Like I have other philodendron with that leaf shape that I like better. And I have other philodendron that have like a fuzzy, like a hairy petiole. So I just didn't, I don't know. It just wasn't really bringing me that much joy. So I got rid of that one when I was downsizing, I think this winter. Also, somebody asked, what happened to your variegated Schlumbergera bloom, which is my Thanksgiving cactus? And this is a good question because I was so excited about that and then I just never updated on it again. So thank you for asking. And the answer is it bloomed, the bloom opened and then it like very promptly shriveled up and died. And I think that this is because it was before I repotted that plant and it was just drying out so much. So it just didn't hold on to the bloom for very long, is my theory. But yeah, it put out a beautiful bloom. It was pink and then it just died off. Um, but the plant is fine, of course. And I'm looking forward to seeing it bloom again. Also, somebody is asking, do you still have your Monstera Peru? No, I got rid of it again when I was downsizing because it was just frustrating me. Like that plant, when other people have it, it looks so beautiful, but mine, it was just putting out so many runners and yeah, I just, it just wasn't bringing me joy, so I got rid of it. Next question is, do you find that anthuriums are more susceptible to cosmetic leaf damage? 
And yes, 100% I do. I find anthuriums so sensitive. Like if they're putting out leaf, first of all, you better be keeping up on your watering. And second of all, oh, you know what? I can just fill sphagnum in the back of this and then it will like keep it steady. Duh, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. But um, yeah, you cannot underwater when they're putting out new leaves and you cannot touch it. You cannot knock it. You cannot have it growing against, like squished up against some, something. They're very sensitive. They will come out wonky if anything happens to them. So yeah, kind of stressful, honestly, when Anthurium are putting out new leaves. Same with Hoya, like you cannot even look at them. You cannot bump it, you cannot, nothing. Can't be growing up against anything. No, no, no. They're very sensitive as well. Are there any plants that you would like to grow but know they wouldn't survive? For me, Honestly, a lot of terrarium plants I think are really cool, but I just don't have a terrarium setup. Not like a big one. I have like my tiny little coffin terrarium from Halloween, but even the plants in there, I'm just like, well, what am I gonna do with these? Um, in the future, when I have more space, I would love to have a terrarium so I can grow some of these just like, I don't know, more finicky plants. But for now, it's just not really, like the highest humidity I have is like in the 80s in my cabinet and also cactus. I would love to grow more varieties of cactus if I had the conditions for it, but again, just don't have enough sun. I'd have to like, you know, have a lot of grow lights for them and everything, so I just don't really bother with that. What's your top, top favorite plant? Not genus, just one plant. That's such a hard question, of course. Like, oh my goodness, how does one even answer that? I have always thought that philodendron varicosum was like, one of my top, top favorite plants, but mine is just looking like crap lately. So I feel like I can't say that. I'm gonna go with Philodendron Majestic because I'm obsessed with Philodendron Majestic right now. So I'm gonna say that that is my top favorite plant at the minute. It changes all the time. So yeah, that's gonna be my answer for now. Okay, I think, oh, I still gotta put more moss in the back. We're almost done here though. Where are you buying most of your plants? Do you recommend buying them from grocery stores? I think buying them from grocery stores is absolutely fine. Like if there's plants you like, there's not really anywhere that I like wouldn't buy plants from. Like I'm comfortable buying them from big box stores, grocery stores, other people, like, you know, whatever. I feel like there's risk. Like if you're worried about pests and things like that, I feel like there's risk of that from anywhere. I mean, there's probably gonna be less risk with like, more reputable shops, but it can happen from anywhere. So yeah, I think wherever there's a plant that you like, you know, you should go for it. Just if you're worried about pests, just keep an eye on it or, you know, try to isolate it at first if you can. But yeah, and places I like to buy plants from, um, some of my favorite shops are Plant Haven Toronto, as we know, they ship to Canada and the US, North Shore Tropicals, also they ship to Canada and the US, Crystal Star Nursery. I actually have an order from them coming this week that I'm very excited about. And what else? Trades, I do a lot of plant trades or I have done a lot of plant trades in the past, which is a great way to get new plants. And just like the Facebook groups as well or Facebook Marketplace are good options too. You can kind of find things at usually a more reasonable price. Okay, I think I'm done with this poll. Does it look a little crazy? Honestly, it doesn't look that bad. I kind of made this crooked when I leaned over the pot, which was silly of me to do, but let me take a look at it. This honestly doesn't look that bad. <laughs> I mean, maybe it does, but I don't really care that much. Yeah, this is the outcome. Oh, the camera is still up here. This is the outcome. Yeah, the smaller extension, but it's fine. Honestly, as long as there is an extension in there, because I was really debating chopping that plant or extending it, and I asked on my Instagram story which one I should do, and extend one. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it and see if I can get bigger leaves on this, and then I'll chop it once it gets to the top of this extension. Okay, I'm gonna get cracking on making the next moss poll. The next question is favorite anthurium. By the way, I love your channel so much. Thank you. Um, my favorite anthurium has to be anthurium politiflorum, and mine is working on a new leaf right now. So I'm very excited to see that. How much light do alocasia cupria really need? Honestly, 
I feel like a lot. I feel like all alocasia need a lot of light. And I don't know why for some, I don't know if there was like a myth going around that was like popular knowledge or something when I first got into plants, but for some reason I thought the alocasia were low light plants. I feel like maybe I would get them confused with calathea um, because they're both like thirstier and I just kind of lump them together. But no, calathea don't like to be blasted with light, but in my experience, alocasia actually need a lot of light. So I have mine in front of a south facing window, but kind of like pulled back. So it's not right in the window getting scorched, but it's getting lots of, lots of light. What is your next Hoya wish list plant? So I really want Hoya praetorii. That's been on my wish list for a while, ever since I first saw it. Cannot find them anywhere in Canada, so I don't know if I'll ever get that one, but the blooms are so freaking cool on that one. I love it so much. And then another one that I want is Hoya undulata. Um, this one has really cool leaves and blooms. And yeah, I actually used to have one a couple of years ago and it just croaked which that's really only happened to me <clears throat> like a couple of times with Hoya. So I don't know, It I was not able to save it though. It just like promptly perished, which sucks because they're expensive. <laughs> so I do not, I have not replaced that one, but one day I will because I really want another Hoya Angelata. I actually have a couple of new Hoya coming to me this week that I ordered from the Plant Haven Toronto sale. They're having a sale for 20% off of your order. Plus I also have a discount code that can be paired with that on top. So you can get a total of 30% off of your order, which is pretty darn good. So if you are interested in shopping from them for their spring sale, um, my discount code for that is I believe spring fern that will get you the additional 10% off, but yeah. I did place an order from them and I'm very excited for that to arrive. I think that's gonna arrive this week as well. Next, do you know how many plants you currently have? Um, okay, first of all, I'm trying to get this out carefully. Oh my goodness, wow. The roots, it's kind of more rooted than I thought. Look at that cluster of roots right there. I don't know exactly how many plants I have right now, but I'm guessing it's like, honestly close to 200, which is way too many. I need to downsize. It's like, I'm saying I need to downsize and then I'm telling you about the new plants that I've ordered. So the problem is clear. The problem is clear. I just, mm, I actually, I'm gonna expand on this more in a different question. Um, actually, let's find that question because it's like kind of related. Oh, there it is. Do you enjoy having so many plants or would you prefer having around 50 to 60 instead? And if I'm being completely honest, I would probably be happier having 50 to 6. I don't know. It's so hard. I'm like, would I? Like care wise, I feel like that would be a lot more manageable. But I just have this like insatiable urge to want to grow all of these different types of plants and experience all of them. And, you know, some plants I, I don't have the best experience growing and I'm OK with parting with them. So I feel like it's kind of like an experience of just like trying them out, seeing what I like and not all of them are gonna stick with me forever, you know? Like I'll probably do another big downsize thing soon and get rid of like 50 plants. Um, but trying out different plants allows me to kind of like learn exactly which ones I really do enjoy and which ones I do wanna have in my collection. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just fun to try out different ones. It's, I love having the experience of learning about them and growing different types of plants. So, I don't know, but also, would it just be probably more chill to have 50 to 60 plants? Yes, yes it would. So I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever be down to that number. I feel like 100 is manageable for me. Like if I could get down to 100, I feel like that would be the sweet spot and just like very, a good, a good number. So we'll see, maybe that will be my goal. It's just so hard to choose sometimes. I mean, some of them are easy. Like some of the ones that I mentioned earlier, like my Monstera Peru, I was just frustrated with and just some plants that I kind of lose interest in. I'm okay with parting with them. But right now I feel like I just, I love, you know, pretty much all of my plants. So it's hard to kind of choose which ones I want to let go. But it's something that just needs to be done sometimes because, you know, time and space and everything, it just gets to be a little bit overwhelming. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and have my soil bin here. I'm gonna start potting this one up.
The next question is, what are your tips on photographing plants? Trying to get better at documenting mine. Honestly, my biggest tip is lighting. Like you just need to have good lighting. That affects the quality of photos so much, more than anything. Um, yeah, so having like taking them with the plant being lit by a really bright window. So I usually take mine right here. And then I have these windows behind me that are lighting the plant. And they really only look good when it's like a bright day outside because if it's doom and gloom out, then yeah, the image quality just isn't great. So lighting is a big one. I also love to like bring the little like exposure thing. Like if you're using the iPhone camera, I love to bring the little exposure thing down and it kind of like darkens. I feel like it like darkens. It just, I don't know. It just like makes it look really like contrasty and nice. Like I love taking my photos, just bringing that, um, bringing that exposure down just a little bit. So that's something that I really like to do, but obviously stuff like that is just gonna be to other people's personal taste. And kind of experimenting with editing is always really fun. I edit my photos, well, most of them. Sometimes I don't edit at all, but when I do want to make some adjustments when it comes to like color or lighting or anything on my photos and just make things stand out a little bit more, I like to use Lightroom. I think that that's a really easy to use, just like, I don't do much. I'm not, I'm not an expert photo editor or anything like that, but I like to just like, you know, increase contrast, increase exposure if I need to add some texture, sharpen it a little bit, you know, you can do simple things like that in there. So another thing to maybe check out, but I would love to learn more about photography and kind of get better at taking photos of my plants as well. Cause I'm definitely not a pro. What is a wishless plant? Where's my moss pole? What is a wishless plant that you got and didn't end up loving as much as you thought you would? So for me, I would definitely say my variegated Hoya compacta. I was so excited with that plant. You guys don't even know. I got that at like the beginning of my plant journey too. So I was like, oh my gosh, like a rare plant. I'm so hyped, love Hoya Compacta. Uh, and that just plant has just not grown for me. And then I was told, oh, the Mauna Loa, the inner variegated version is much easier. So get that one if you want a variegated Compacta. So I got that one and I was so excited about it. Again, just hasn't grown for me. So I don't know what my curse is with variegated Hoya Compacta, but both of those have been very disappointing. I still have them and I'm still trying, but not a great experience. And then also my Alocasia Black Velvet, another plant that I just have not had a good experience with growing. And I was so excited when I got that too. So yeah, I don't know. Those ones have been tough. How did the lace wings work out? The lace wings actually worked out really well. I loved having them. I felt like my pest situation, I didn't really see any pests. I saw spider mites on one of my plants and then I put the lace wings on and it like diminished them a ton. So I really like the lace wings. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I had um, green lace wing larvae. I released like, I don't know, a couple of months ago now. And um, those are really good for a variety of different pests. So they were suggested to me because they, you know, they do spider mites, mealybugs. Um, I think they might even do thrips. I'm not sure, but they're really good, like general purpose, um, like what's it called beneficial bug. So I, I had a really good experience with them. The only reason that I didn't repurchase or that I haven't repurchased yet is because they're so expensive. It cost me like $100 for those and you're supposed to do it every six weeks, I think. So I don't know, seems a little pricey, but I might get them again, we'll see. I could see doing them, especially at like high risk times, like when the seasons are changing, like we were going to spring when I released them and I felt like that was a really good time to kind of like test them out and just have some extra help and I was also so busy um, during the time that I released them so it just felt nice to kind of not have to worry about pest control for a while so I really did like them I just don't really like the price you know but that's just kind of how how things are sometimes I will say it was probably worth the money because it saved my sanity but I just don't know if it's something that I could afford to like keep up with all year type of thing what plant in your collection are you disliking the most right now? Winter has been rough. So the plant that I have been the most frustrated with is probably my Syndapsis Silver Cloud, 
which I love that plant so much, like the way it looks, it's absolutely beautiful. You know, me and my silver plants. So having just like pretty much an entirely silver syndapsis, I'm like, oh my goodness, sign me up, so gorgeous. But yeah, I don't know what it is. It just, I've propagated and tried to grow it from the propagations like so many different times. I think I have how many different ones? I think I have a couple different pots of it going right now. And I don't know what it is, but I always get browning on the leaves. Like the leaves just basically disintegrate. And I don't know what that's about, but it sucks because I just, I wanna see that plant do well, but ugh, yeah, it is just not doing great. So that's probably the plant that I'm just like, ugh, about right now. Do you use a moisture meter? Can't decide if I should get one or not. Honestly, I used to use a moisture meter and I did find it really helpful, but I'm so like, I know my plants so well by now and I feel like I just have enough experience to understand when they need to be watered and I can just tell by the plant because I know them well and I can tell by like the weight of the pot and just different things like that. So I don't need one, but I do feel like it's a, it's a useful tool for beginners. Um, so I would suggest it, like if you're thinking about it um, and you think it would help you, then yeah, I would pick one up. Any planty destination you'd like to visit? This is a good question. I see people go on other planty trips to like Costa Rica and places like that. And I would love that to see like these cool tropical plants in the wild, like genuinely I would. But I also have a fear of like the creatures that come with those locations, like spiders and snakes and just like poisonous things. So I feel like I would be like, I mean, not saying I wouldn't go because of that, but I would probably be stressed. I would probably be stressed. Um, I went to Guatemala like years ago now, probably like more than 10 years ago now. And I was stressed. I loved it. Honestly, probably my favorite place I've ever traveled. But I remember just being like scared walking through the rainforest. So yeah, I mean, you can't let fear hold you back, but I'm scared of a lot of things, you guys. Like I'm, I have a lot of fears. I am not a very, uh, like I'm not a very, I'm not much of a daredevil or much of a risk taker when it comes to doing things. I'm even scared of flying, like very, very anxious flyer. So even the thought of like getting myself somewhere like that <laughs> stresses me out. I don't know. It's, I mean, like I said, it's not like I wouldn't do things cause I wouldn't want my fear to hold me back. But yeah, I would love to go a lot of places like Thailand. I would love to go there. Um, I would actually love to go to Australia, but I'm so terrified. <laughs> like when I see photos of the big spiders and stuff, like the huntsman spiders, oh my God. I, I literally can like feel a physical reaction in my body. Like I'm so scared. So <laughs> I don't know. We don't have things like that here in Canada. We do have some like, the spiders can get kind of big here, but not like that, not like that. Olive is having a little bork because somebody just dropped off a package. Settle down, baby. Olive is actually a very barky dog, which is something that people might not know about her because she's usually just like chill in my videos because it's literally just me and a camera. But if she doesn't know somebody, like she is guard dog duty. Like if you were to come over to my house and she doesn't know you, no, no, no. The hair on her back would be up and she'd be barking. She's not vicious. Like she's never bit anyone or anything like that. She's just scared and protective. Um, but yeah. Anyways, what's the question we're working on? What's your favorite type of cactus? Um, I really like the spiral cactus. That is the one I would have if I was going to get another cactus and like put the effort into getting it proper light or like overwintering it properly or something to keep it nice. I love spiral cactus. They're just like the coolest. How is your orchid doing? Um, my orchid is actually doing well. Thank you so much for asking. I, uh, yeah, it's doing well, honestly. I don't know. I'm just like watering it when, when the moss is dry. And in one of my updates, I was talking about repotting it, how I wanted to repot it soon because it's just in this tiny little thing, plastic thing that it came in. And someone commented and said, do not, like you cannot repot orchids. It just leave it in there forever. And I was like, really? Like, is that true? 
somebody please advise. More people need to advise because, you know, I need more than just one, one opinion. Anyways, I'll obviously research it myself, but if you want to leave me a comment, or kid friends, <laughs> let me know. I was just shocked by that. I'm like, really? Like, do you not repot them? I don't know. I don't know. But my orchid's doing well. It still has a lot of its blooms. It's lost some of them, like they've dried up and fallen off, but it still has a lot of its blooms. It's beautiful. It makes me so, so happy. I really want more of them. Crystal Star Nursery actually has a lot of orchids, so I think I'm going to be placing another order from them. Um, and getting more once I just like decide which ones I want. I'm very overwhelmed when it comes to orchids. Very overwhelmed because I don't know much about them. So yeah, um, I actually think that I might, I was considering repotting my orchid, but I actually think that I might mount it because I got these tree fern fiber mounts and I think it'd be really cool to try to mount my orchid onto there. So I might actually do that rather than repotting it, but I'm still curious about the repotting thing because I want to get more orchids. So please advise. Will sun-stressed Hoya remain pink if moved away from the light source? Um, no, they will not remain sun-stressed. Uh, that's the thing about Hoya that you need to like keep them in highlight for them to maintain their sun stressing. It's just like a suntan, you know? I'm darker in the summer and then I'll fade in the winter when I'm not in the light anymore. So yeah, it's the same kind of thing. They will just go back to green or whatever, like my Hoya Sunrise. Why does that name sound weird? No, that's definitely the name. My Hoya Sunrise was, did have some sun stressing and then it just, it completely lost it all and it's just green now. But if I get it, you know, in a south facing window or under some good girl lights or something, it will sun stress again. So yeah, I need to do that because they're so pretty when they're sun stressed. I find it hard to sun stress Hoya, probably just because I don't have a lot of sun here, but even under grow lights, like, I don't know, it's just not easy. Although my Hoya Williniana did get really nicely sun stressed under my Soltec light, but now I've moved it and it's lost its sun stressing. How has your experience been using Lekka? Would you recommend it to others? My experience using Leca was not great, but that's a me thing because I see other people thriving in the Leca life. Uh, so I would s suggest to you to watch Hakuna La Planta, Kevin, because his plants are phenomenal and he grows like primarily in semi-hydro in Leca and Pond. So go check out his channel because like his plants are just, wow. It's so impressive and I have no idea how he does it because I could not live the lack of life. Like it just did not like me. I don't know what I was doing wrong to this day, but yeah, <laughs> my plants were just rotting in it. So I am no one to give advice on that topic. Okay, next we are moving into the personal questions. And I will say, first of all, that the most common question I got asked was about my boyfriend, about my love life. Who is it? What's up? What's going on? And as much as I would love to answer that question, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how much I want to share about my relationship on the World Wide Web. And right now I'm just in a place where I don't think I'm really going to be sharing about it. And I'm sorry. I know y'all want the tea. I know. I know. I just, I feel like I used to share so much and probably overshare like when things would happen and when, and yeah, just... I don't know. I'm not gonna say I learned my lesson because I wouldn't say anything negative really came from that. I just don't know if I want to, I don't know, my channel's a little bigger now and I just don't know if I want to be exposing my relationship to the criticism of the internet. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm not saying I'm never gonna share about it, but right now it's just something that I'm just keeping to myself. And yeah, I have shared about it um, on my Patreon for like, you know, the people on there who are a little bit more, um, it's just like a, a smaller, more intimate community. Um, and those are the people who like really care about my personal life too, because a lot of people here watching my plant channel just like don't really care. Um, I know some of you really do because I, I keep getting this question. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what the future brings. Not saying I'm never gonna share about it, but for now, I'm just not ready to. So I'm sorry about that, but yeah. Just had to address that first. 
So the first question I'm gonna be answering out of the personal section is, what is your first name? Can I ask that? Or for privacy, do you not share? And I always get this question whenever I do a Q and A, so I'll just address it quickly. My name is Fern, that is my birth name. It's like a happy coincidence that I also am into plants and I have a plant name. Very fun, good job to my mom. Um, so yeah, there's that. And I also got another question about my name, which is what is the origin of your name? It's so pretty. So my name, you know, I think that the name Fern is a lot more common in the UK. Like I think it's like an English name that um, just isn't that popular here over here. I don't know because whenever I see other ferns like online and stuff, they're usually from the UK. So UK people, you can tell me if it's more common there or not. I definitely don't meet other ferns here. Not very often. I think I've met like one and she was an old lady and it was so crazy to like meet another fern. Although I will say it is becoming a little bit more popular as far as um, like I see people on the internet using it more. Uh, like there's multiple people that I follow who have kids named Fern, which is really interesting. Um, just because it was like so unheard of for me before. So now to see other people name their kids Fern. There's even people that I like kind of knew, like was like acquaintances of mine that had a baby a couple years ago and named it Fern, which was very just like, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, my mom got it from Charlotte's Web. If you've seen that movie or read that book. Okay, next question is travel plans. And does someone take care of the plants if you travel or you don't travel for a long time? Um, since I've had a lot of plants, I have not gone on any trips or anything. And obviously a lot of us weren't going on trips or anything for the past few years, but now people are traveling again. So I'm getting this question more often. Um, honestly, I'm not a big traveler. Like I love being home. I'm a homebody already. Um, I just, I don't know. I feel like I'm very, not different, but I feel like a lot of people just like love to travel and like really want to travel. But for me, I, I don't know. I like being at home. I live in a beautiful place. Like this is a major tourist destination, especially if you're in Canada, like this is where people come to take their vacation here. So I already live here. Like there's so much to explore and so much to do here already. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Will I travel in the future? Yes. But do I have any like current travel plans? No. Um, and there's also just like, I'm at a time in my life where my money is going other places as well. So yeah, it's just like, I don't have the money to be traveling and I just like, don't, there's nowhere that I like am dying to go right now. So yeah, I would love to go to the UK. Honestly, that's probably like one of my top places that I would like to go. Okay, I need to arrange this so it's gonna be like facing the right way. Let's go this way. Would love to know Olive's story. How old is she? When did she first come into your life? So Olive's birthday was actually yesterday. It's not her actual birthday, it's the day that I like. It's like her estimated birthday um, because she is a rescue, so I don't know the actual day she was born. I wish I knew, but I don't know. Anyways, so she's actually 10 years old, which is so crazy that she's in the double digits now. Like, yeah, it just blows my mind. Yeah, she's 10 years old. I've had her since she was, they estimated she was about three to four months old when I got her. And she was a rescue from California, actually. So they like flew her up here and then I went and met her. It was just like, I don't know, things were a lot more relaxed, it seems, when I got Olive compared to like when I hear people's stories of adopting dogs now, it's like a very, very strict procedure. And I'm not saying that's wrong because, you know, it's it should be taken very seriously. And it's funny because lately I've been seeing a lot of like videos online, like TikToks and stuff of people talking about how uh, like telling people, you know, don't get a dog in your 20s. Like you should wait until you're in your 30s and wait until you're a little bit more stable just because a dog is such a big responsibility and it really ties you down. And yeah, there's just like a bunch of people saying, you know, I wish I would have waited until I was in my 30s to get a dog. And I kind of agree with that. Like as much as I li literally would not change a thing, like I love Olive so much. She's like m the number one best thing in my life. Um, I, I do agree with that to an extent because, um, it's just a lot. Like a dog is such a big responsibility. It's, it, it's so expensive. Like I spend so many thousands of dollars every year to give Olive the proper vet, vet care she needs and everything. It takes so much of my time up 
and I feel like I maybe would have done a better job of that. Not that I ever have neglected her or anything, but um, it's just a big responsibility for, you know, I was 21 when I got her. So yeah, it's just like, it's a bigger responsibility than I, than I was like really thinking. Like when you're 20, you know, you're just thinking like, oh, it's going to be like fun to have a dog or whatever. But no, it's a big massive responsibility it takes up a lot of your time it really ties you down when it comes to like doing things you know I can't just go out all day and do something with my friends or so you know I always need to be home to take care of Olive like at a certain time now she has medications that she takes for her heart every day that I need to, it's a very strict schedule and I need to be here and that schedule basically like rules my life so um yeah it's just I'm going on a tangent now about like what a big responsibility having a dog is. Um, but anyways, what is the question? What is Olive's story? How old is she? When did she first come into your life? Yep. So I've had her for 10 years, almost 10 years now. And, um, yeah, she has been literally the biggest blessing to me. I just love her so stinking much. I also got a lot of other questions about like, would I get another dog or another pet? And right now, no, like maybe in the future, but like, you know, when you feel like you, I don't know if this, if anyone else feels like this, but I feel like I love her so much. Like I can't, I can't even like begin to imagine that love for another dog or like with another dog. Like I'm so bonded to her and I don't, I don't ever want to like imagine like if she wasn't here and I got another dog or like right now I just feel very like, I wouldn't ever get another dog because I'm so bonded to her and I just like, I just, I don't know. I just don't have a desire to get another dog. I'm very like emotionally like attached and thinking of losing Olive, like I almost feel like I don't want to put myself through that twice. Like once, you know, I've had my time with Olive and everything, then that's it. Like I do not want to have to put myself through that again, but obviously, you know, that I've, Olive has brought me so much joy. So would I like never want to experience that again? I don't know. It's such a weird, like complicated, like I just, I think about these things all the time because I have a really big fear of losing Olive. Sorry, I spend a lot of time thinking about these kinds of things though. Anyways, the plant is now potted up. I don't think the vines are quite long enough to attach to the pole, but they will be soon. And like, how good does this look? This is literally, the perfect setup, I'm obsessed. The terracotta with these marble leaves, literally stunning. Oh my goodness. Yeah, gorgeous. Can't wait to get a couple more leaves so that I can attach it to the pole. I love that so much. Okay, well we finished our plant chores and I still have questions to go through. Maybe I'll just go through the rest of the questions. I'll put the plants here so it's still kind of planty. We can, we can admire them. I'll have to put this one back here. There we go. Can you see them? I hope my mic is blocking out the noise from outside too. It's getting a little rowdy out there. I need to know what makeup you use. Your eyes glitter in your videos and I love it. Thank you so much. There was also another comment asking about my makeup as well for me to like make a makeup tutorial or something. And there is one on my vlog channel. So I'll link that down below if you're not subscribed to my vlog channel because I do have a whole dedicated makeup video on there. What was it like moving to a new part of Canada when you left Saskatchewan? Was it hard to make friends? So I grew up in Saskatchewan, which is like in the prairies of Canada. And my mom moved out to Vancouver Island. She's originally from here. So she was already here. And I decided when I was 21, I decided to just pack up my car and move out here. So that's what I did. And um, she was the only person that I knew here. And it wasn't hard for me to make friends solely because a couple months after I moved here, I started nursing school. And in nursing school, you're very close with you. It's, it's literally like your family, like a second family, because you're with each other so much and you're sharing just like so many emotional experiences and it's just like very bonding. So I was, I was good friends with a lot of my classmates um, who I'm not really in touch with them anymore, which, you know, I don't know, I guess that just kind of happens. Like sometimes there's like something that like glues you together and then when you don't have that thing in common anymore, it's just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I don't really see them anymore. But it was like, it was really good. I loved my nursing school experience. Um, and yeah, it made the transition to living somewhere new a lot easier in a way because 
um, I just like immediately had all of these kind of like built in friends and classmates and acquaintances, you know? What do you do to help with seasonal depression? Uh, run. That was like the biggest thing that helped me this winter was getting into my running routine. Probably any exercise would help you, but yeah, I loved running and I really felt like it helped. Do you have a job in addition to your plant stuff? No, I do not. Um, I do content creation full time, which is very fun and I'm very grateful. Do you have any tattoo regrets? What's your favorite tattoo? Oh yeah, there's a bunch I clustered, a bunch of different tattoo questions that I kind of clustered together. So do you have any tattoo regrets? Yes, I think that any person who is like, any, any amount of like heavily tattooed uh, is going to have tattoo regrets. A, a lot of my tattoos, if not the majority of them are like 10 years old at this point. And it, <laughs> I don't think that there's anything that I'm like like upset about or like am dwelling on like my regret but like if I could redo most of my tattoos I probably would just because I don't know I'd probably just like choose something else or like plan it out differently or I don't know you know this is a lot of them are just random things that I got on me like when I was so young I should have waited until the old frontal lobe was developed but I did not so that's what happens um at this point, I really don't care though. Like, I feel like I, I don't know. They're just whatever. And some of them are, you know, fun little memories. So it's all good. What's your favorite tattoo of yours? Probably, I have a couple on this arm that I really like. My cow, first of all, is one that I really like. I got that when I went to New York. I also got this one in New York, which is this like, oh my goodness, you're not gonna be able to see it, but it's like a, um, what even is it again? A hand holding a heart that has like a dagger through it and it's like dripping down. I really love that one. I got both of those done when I was visiting New York actually. Um, and the cow one is supposed to be like representative of veganism and just like my love for animals. Um, and it's also a matching tattoo with my ex best friend, which is a little fun fact. We have the same one and I miss, I miss that time and I miss her a lot. So it's not, um, I wouldn't say that friendship ended on good terms, but but I still appreciate having that memory because that person was a really big part of my life. And uh, there's so many lovely, lovely memories that are associated with that. Do you plan on getting more tattoos? I'll probably get the odd tattoo here and there. I did just get, oh yeah, the next question is, do you have a new tattoo? I did just get a couple new little ones. This is a little strawberry right here. I don't know how well you can see, but just like a little gap filler right there. Um, so here, here and there, I'll probably get tattoos. Number one, I hate getting tattooed. Like literally, I just don't have the patience to be in pain like that anymore, to like put myself through that. Now that I'm older, I'm just like, mm, no thanks. Like that does not sound fun. And number two, I am saving my money and spending my money on just like more responsible things, I guess, like more adulty things. Like I'm, I'm saving a lot of money and just, yeah. I have, you know, things are expensive right now too. Like I just don't have the extra money to just be spending on something like getting tattoos. I feel like I used to like associate myself with, is that the word associate myself? Uh, no, uh, oh my gosh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Not characterize myself, identify myself maybe. I used to really identify with like being a tattooed person and I was really interested in that and it was just like something that I was like focused on and I was like oh yeah like I would you know plan trips around like getting new tattoos and things like that and now I'm just like I don't know I just don't really care that much and I just it's just not something that I really think about that often but I do get a lot of questions about it because even though I'm not really thinking about it of course other people are seeing my tattoos and like being curious about it which is cool but yeah it's just not really something that's like in my orbit as much nowadays. I know you're a Gemini. What are your moon and rising signs? So I'm a Gemini sun, of course, uh, Scorpio moon and Libra rising. Very fun, isn't it? Do you feel pressure to own the latest trendy plants because you are a plant tuber? I felt like this was an interesting question because no, I don't think I feel the pressure to own the trendy plants because I'm a plant tuber. 
if anything, I actually find the opposite. Like I find that the plants that are gonna get like more views and more interest or are the more common plants because that's the kind of plants that more people have. So I find that the content creators that are more focused on common plants actually have, get more views and like have bigger followings. Like if you look at some of these really big channels then you'll probably see that. Um, so if I was like thinking about specifically about being a plant tuber, I'd probably put more energy into common plants actually. So it's kind of the opposite. Um, but like the trendy, like more rare plants, I don't feel the pressure to own them like for my channel, but I do just like, I'm, I'm in the social media world. So I'm seeing a lot of other people post these plants and things. So I think it's more tempting for me to get them just because I see them and I'm interested and I want them, but yeah, interesting question. How old are you? I'm 30 years old, turning 31 in June. Have you ever regretted doing YouTube full time? Honestly, yes. I've had small moments of just, um, I wouldn't say I've, like, have I regretted it? I don't know. I have had moments of being like, why did I do this? Like it's, it's complicated a lot of things for me like it's just working for yourself is a lot more stressful than working for someone else which is what I've found and before I actually experienced it and have done it I didn't I obviously didn't know like the logistics of things and um yeah in a lot of I've had a lot of moments where I'm just like wow it would have been a lot more simple to just have like either kept my old job or like I don't know if I went and like got a different job or whatever like I've definitely had moments like that, but overall, um, like those moments are usually when things are more high stress, like when I'm doing my taxes or like trying to just figure different adulty things out. Um, so yeah, I've definitely had like moments like that, but in general, I am mostly just like very grateful and thankful and just like, I can't believe that I am doing this or that I'm still doing this or like, I don't know, it's just crazy. So. Yeah, overall, I do not regret it. I especially don't regret leaving nursing because that job was sucking the life out of me. Um, so, you know, if I ever was to leave YouTube and get a different, like a regular job, I'd probably, it just, it wouldn't be in healthcare. It would be something else, like something with plants probably, ideally. Um, but yeah, Sorry, that's kind of a complicated answer, but it's kind of a complicated thing and I kind of feel differently about it at different times. You know what I mean? Are you a homebody or someone who is always leaving the house? Oh, I'm definitely a homebody. Like definitely, definitely. Um, I am like, I actually want to make it a goal for me to leave the house more because I do not leave enough. Like I think it will be good for me to get out of the house more, but I just love being home, yeah. I'm a homebody through and through. I love just, you know, chilling here. What are you listening to lately? Music, podcasts, question mark. Well, I'm actually listening to a phenomenal audiobook right now, if you want to hear about that. I'm listening to Crying in H Mart, which um, is a memoir written by a Korean American woman about uh, the like complex relationship with her family and her mom passing from cancer and just like navigating grief and oh my goodness it is so good like I it has blown me away how good this book is I low-key thought it was maybe going to be a book that's like overhyped because I've found that lately with a lot of like popular books I've been reading I'm just kind of like eh, like doesn't really live up to the hype but this one first of all I'm listening to the audiobook it's on Libby and um, it's narrated by the author and it just feels like so personal and so like I've literally just been sobbing listening to this book. It is so freaking good. So that's a book I've really been loving that I've been listening to. As far as music, what have I been? I haven't really like been listening to any new music or anything like been listening to, you know, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. I'm literally always listening to Taylor Swift. Um, Gracie Abrams. Ethel Kane, Noah Kahn, Alana Del Rey, Soccer Mommy. Yeah, I've been I've been really drawn to more like, I don't know, just like soft music lately, I guess would be the best way to describe it. 
and I've really been enjoying that. But um, yeah, and as for podcasts, I haven't really been listening to podcasts lately. Honestly, I was on a big podcast kick and then I just kind of, I just haven't really been listening to them as much, but I need to get back into them because I love listening to podcasts. I think it's because I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks lately uh, that I haven't been listening to podcasts. Do you want to have kids? Literally don't know. Honestly, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I'm like never say never, but I've just never like particularly felt drawn to having kids and I just feel like I should feel that. Like if I'm gonna go ahead and do that, I should like want to be a mom, you know what I mean? But I've just never really been someone who feels that way. So yeah, and just also with the way, like I don't even know how I would afford kids right now or like, not right now, but like even like who knows in a couple of years, I don't know. Never say never. I'm, I don't have like a solid answer for this, but like I'm leaning towards no. And envisioning my life without kids, like I feel, I feel like right now my biggest reason to like want to have kids when I like think about, you know, what I want is that I don't want to regret not having kids. And for me, it's just not enough not a good enough reason to bring someone else into this world because I'm scared I'm going to regret not doing it. You know what I mean? And I feel like I'd rather um, not have kids and regret it than have kids and regret it. Ooh. So, I don't know. I'm definitely, like, as I'm in my getting, like, into my 30s now, it's definitely something that, like, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird time being a woman in your 30s. Do you identify with a specific religion slash spirituality? No. Um, is this what you thought you would be doing? No. Like, literally no. This is like, well, it's funny because I've always been, like, from when YouTube was a very new thing, like, when, like, you know, like, influencers and content creators, that, like, wasn't even, it was, like, just becoming a thing. Like, there was a few people that were, like, on YouTube, um, I was very into YouTube even then. Like, I've been watching YouTube for... Oh my goodness. Years and years, like since I was a teenager, I've been like an avid YouTube watcher. So I've always been like really interested in social media and like very aware of it and very like, yeah, I don't know. It's always been something I've wanted to do, but did I ever think I would actually like, you know, have a channel with over a hundred thousand subscribers and like have people that care and like have it be about plants even like that's so random. I literally never would have thought that. <laughs> um, Favorite forms of self-care when it comes to like traditional forms of self-care, like, you know, chilling, relaxing. I love having baths and I love painting my nails. I paint my nails about once every like seven to 10 days, I would say. And it's always a really nice, just relaxing moment for me to just put a show on and just, you know, wind down for an hour or so and just paint my nails. So I really like doing that. But really for me, the best form of self-care is getting things done that I put off. That's like, it's not glamorous and it's not fun and it's not like the typical like, oh, self-care spa night kind of thing. But that is what like helps me mentally the most because when I have so many things weighing on me, like I'm a very anxious person already. So when I have so many things weighing on me, it's just, it's not good. So the best thing for me to do to get myself to feel better and to take away that anxiety and stress and pressure is just to, like get things done that I've been putting off. So that's, yeah, very important self-care for me. What are your top favorite shows? Uh, I loved Stranger Things. Like, literally, I love that. That's, like, a comfort show for me. Um, I love Stranger Things. I also love, um, like, any thrillers. Like, there was a series on Netflix called Behind Her Eyes based on a book, which was so good. Um, I used to watch a lot of kind of, like, true crime documentaries. As my anxiety got worse, I kind of, like, stopped watching as much. I've been, like, just lately, like, listening to a little bit of that stuff again but yeah I used to love like watching like any documentaries on like I don't know just crazy things or like true crime or stuff like that um last year at this time last spring I binge watched Bridgerton and literally was obsessed and it was like the perfect sp spring vibes and then after I watched that I went and did like the afternoon tea like the high tea thing at the botanical gardens here and it was just like literally the perfect Bridgerton vibes kind of 
thing. It was like the perfect pairing to be watching that series and then doing that. So I love that. I can't wait for season three. Right now I'm watching Daisy Jones and the Six, which is pretty good. It's on Amazon Prime. And then I'm also watching The Last of Us slowly. It's taking a while for me to get through it. Not because it isn't good. It's like phenomenal, but um, I just am slow at watching shows. A dream slash wish of yours for the future you. Um, I just want like a very just simple, happy life. I want low stress and I want to just be doing things that bring me joy. Like, you know, I like the whole idea of like slow living and um, just doing things that really nourish me, growing my food, making like beautiful meals um, and just yeah, just having like a peaceful, happy life. That is my biggest wish for myself. Wondering some of the things that you love versus don't love about island life. So living on Vancouver Island. Um, so the things that I love are the summers. The summers are so gorgeous here. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait. Um, also just like the mild climate in general, like the climate here is a love hate for me but the part that I love about it is that it's the warmest place in Canada like right now I live in the warmest city in Canada so this is warm as it gets baby <laughs> and um and just like the the nature here the landscape is so beautiful like it's very breathtaking we have so many mountains so much forest ocean so many lakes like it's just it's beautiful there's so much to do if you like the outdoors um like if you like you know hiking mountain biking um skiing like you can do anything here there's just so much um and dislike is the long gloomy winters i will say that i'd rather have the rain than the snow I actually really like rain. It's just like the prolonged darkness that I struggle with. And a lot of the times it's not even raining. It's just dark, like clouded over and gloomy. I'd rather it just like pour rain, but it doesn't always. Um, so yeah, the cloudiness that gets to me, you know, once we're nearing the end of the uh, winter, that really gets to me. Um, but I will say it's nice. Like we get very minimal snow here. Like usually only like, I don't know, a couple weeks of snow. Um, but yeah, uh, it's getting really busy here, which is something else that I don't like. It's also very touristy in like the summertime. So it's just driving on the highway is very busy and things like that. Um, and it's also very, very expensive. <laughs> so yeah, that's something that sucks. You definitely pay a price to live here. Um, but if you're someone who really likes like nature and the outdoors, then, you know, that's why people live here for that. So um, yeah, it's beautiful here. It's great. I love it. Do you ever miss nursing? Um, no. Occasionally I miss like the, I feel like I've said this before, but occasionally I miss like the like working as a team and like having coworkers and just like, it's like a whole vibe, like having a little work family, you know? Um, so I miss that, but if that's not like, but then I remember all of the other like awful things <laughs> about my experience and I don't miss it anymore. Are you happy? Yes. And do you feel like you have your shit together? No, literally not at all. <laughs> Anything fun going on in your social life? I wish I had outdoorsy friends to camp with and stuff. No, my social life is like dry as a bone right now. I've just been hermiting so hard. And also my friend group is very sprawled out now. Like we're all kind of in different cities. Like we're all kind of doing different things. And yeah, it kind of sucks that it's like grown apart in a sense. Um, yeah, we don't really have plans for the summer yet. Hopefully, hopefully some someone will want to come camping with me because I would love to do another friend camping trip. Um, but as for right now, summer is kind of up in the air. Any hint on the big thing slash announcement you've mentioned? Okay, so I've mentioned that something big is coming up and I have prepared a riddle for you. For the people who have watched this video this long, um, especially without me like even doing any plant things, I'm just literally sitting here. So you get a hint on the announcement. Okay, are you ready? Something that requires much learning, but for which I have been yearning. I have to do a lot to repair and I can't wait to share. My garden will be planted late, but it's going to be great and so worth the wait. It's something that my plants will also appreciate. 
Some of you may know the stress, but I must confess, for me, this is a source of much happiness. We've done this before, so let's do it once more. -na 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 -na. Let me know. <laughs> Let me know what you think of my riddle. I worked very hard on it. Okay, now the last questions are just the miscellaneous ones. I'm gonna kind of like quick fire these ones. I know this is getting so long and my third and last battery is gonna die. So favorite Mooncat nail polish. Oh my goodness, I don't even know. I really like this pinky. I don't know if it's even gonna focus, but this like pinky one that I have right now, it's called Winds of Fate. Um, there's a blue that I really like called Sunken Splendor, or maybe it's Poseidon's Prize. I think it's Poseidon's Prize, the one that I really like. Celestial Rage is another shade that I really like. I honestly love all their polishes. Alien Invasion, that's like a green one. I want to order more of them, but like the shipping and everything and like the conversion rate, it's pretty expensive for me to get them, but Black Friday, I will be getting more because yeah, these nail polishes honestly bring so much joy to me. Favorite clothing item that you can't live without, definitely my overalls or my short alls for the summer. I literally love overalls. I really want another pair as well. How do you feel about Akatar? I tried to read the series, but got stuck on book two. Akatar is A Court of Thorns and Roses, and it's a fantasy so series. I have read the first and the second book, and honestly, like, I liked it, but did I love it? Was I obsessed? No. I think I rated them four out of five stars, but I feel like that was even a little bit generous based on my, like, reading experience. I don't know. Like, they were good, and I do want to finish the series, but... I don't think I'm, I'm definitely not like as obsessed as everybody else is about those books. Can we find you on Goodreads? Yes, I think my name on there is just Wild Fern, but I'll link my Goodreads link below. You can keep up with whatever books I'm reading and what I rate them and things like that. I got some questions about my hair. Um, how is your hair now? Do you regret shaving? Um, no. I am very glad that I shaved my head because now my hair is so healthy and this is like the happiest I've been with my hair in a long time. I love it so much. I'm so impressed with myself that I was able to just like grow out my natural color. I mean, obviously I have like a couple of chunks of blonde, which I really like as well, which I was very, you know, I put these, this blonde in my hair because it used to be pink in those spots. And I was like, oh, like if, if it fades out, it's not gonna look good. But I actually love the way it faded out and the way it looks. So I'm just really happy with it. I do have a hair appointment for the beginning of, well, like the second week of May, I think, um, for me to get a haircut and just get it like cleaned up a bit. So I'm really excited about that. But yeah, is it hard to bleach your own hair? Are you scared of overdoing it? Um, for me, it's not that hard because my hair, like my natural hair color isn't that dark and I've done it a lot before. Like I used to solely just bleach my hair myself. Um, so I'm not really scared of overdoing it. I also have just really like coarse, tough hair. So it kind of takes a lot to damage it. Um, but would I bleach my own head, my like whole head myself again? Probably not just because I don't know, I've just spent time like growing out my healthy hair and everything. So I probably just wouldn't do that. But like throwing in a couple pieces, I'm perfectly comfortable to do that. Are you planning on dyeing your hair again? No, I might do like touch up these blonde chunks or something because I do really like the way they look, but not planning on dyeing it anytime soon. Are you doing World Naked Gardening Day? It's actually this weekend and no, I am not because last year my post got reported and I just don't feel like, I don't know, losing my Instagram account over something like that. So sadly, I will not be doing it. Um, most challenging part of being an influencer, just being accountable and being my own boss and having to like figure out every single like facet of like all the business side of everything. I just like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it can be a bit of a headache and just having to have enough self-discipline to just like keep up with everything. And yeah, it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of just like running the business side of things and you know it's not just sitting in front of the camera and talking to you guys like there's just so much more that goes into this um so yeah just like being accountable for everything every aspect and um everything's just up to me I have nobody else telling me what to do if I if you know it's solely up to me to make sure that my bills are getting paid and everything is you know going well so it can be a little bit stressful 
Okay, we're gonna end with, where is Olive's favorite spot to sleep? Her favorite spot to sleep is between my legs. <laughs> when I'm sitting on the couch or anything like she always just comes in and wants to be like right between my legs and sometimes I'm so uncomfortable and I just want to like I don't know shift my position but I can't because she's literally just like right has a nest like right in between them <laughs> and she does it when I'm sleeping at night too in my bed I like sleep with my legs like sprawled out <laughs> but she's worth it anyways holy smokes what a video this has been I'm actually have a sore back from sitting here for so long um all right, well, my battery is gonna die. So thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far in the video. Wow. Um, yeah, hopefully I will be able to do Q and A's a little bit more often because that was a lot of questions that built up. So thank you so much to everyone who sent one in. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being interested <laughs> to know my answers and to hear about my life and my thoughts and everything. I really appreciate that. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below and like this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.